Hello dear YouTuber friends and I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video. Now I was playing around with my Velocity 1 flight deck with the aim of creating an upcoming configuration setup guide for you which will be forthcoming. During my research and testing I came across something quite incredible that a lot of you may not be aware with with the Velocity 1 flight deck in Flight Sim 2024. Let me demonstrate, let me get inside the aircraft, keep an eye on the autopilot panel and goodness knows what. I'm going to press record on my camera. There you go, now you can see I've got a bespoke panel set up here with bespoke buttons that I've set up. I'm going to show you how you can do that. But watch. Autopilot master. Autopilot master off. Autopilot master. On. Heading hold on. Essentially on the flight deck you can set up pretty much any command you want to. And you can use this touch screen, which a lot of us have thought, including myself, thought wasn't working properly with Flight Sim 2024 and Flight Sim 2020. You can set up pretty much any command with this. And I'm going to show you how, how this works and how you can get it working. I'm also going to show you how you can set up your own bespoke screen with your own bespoke buttons on that touch screen. So let's not dilly dally, let's get on with this video. Now then, I'm just set up as at a random airport around Europe. Let's jump inside the aircraft. I want to take you to this view because I'll be setting up a few buttons here. Let's just zoom in a little bit. And there we go. What I'll do, what I found actually during my discoveries, if you go to settings and control settings, similar to the MyApp Pro for Xbox, a lot of the commands for the touch screen on the Velocity 1 flight deck are under keyboard. Do you believe it? So a lot of them are combined with keyboard and you can configure these to whatever you want to make them easier and goodness knows what. I've just got it on the general 2024 keyboard commands. What I'll do, let's get straight into this. Press record. There we go, you can see my touchscreen. That's the default touchscreen. I've got it on the default profile. That will look a fam a familiar to a lot of you with the Velocity 1 flight deck. What I'm going to do, I'm going to click in search by input on the keyboard and press that first one. Comes up as Q, as you can see, to the left there. I'll do the same for all of them. W for the second one. So I'm just going search by input on the keyboard, search by input, oops, and then we'll click the third one. I'm just going to test these top three buttons. All these buttons have an equivalent keyboard command. So there you go, Q, Q W and E, Q, W and E. Let me get rid of my shoddy camera work. And there we go, and we can continue with this. So I know, I'm just going to press that first one again. I won't record that again, but I know that's Q. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to delete anything, things like move down, that I don't want on there. Uh, I'm going to have to s rename the profile, of course, because we're affecting the default profile. So new deck one, that will be fine. And we can go back. So I've deleted that assignment. Drone won't uh, actuate during this because I'm not in drone view. Rudder left. Oh, yeah, I don't want that one either. 
Uh, delete assignment. So I'm just deleting anything. This is just an example. I'll show you how you can amend those buttons later so that they don't affect common controls. Slew down. Uh, shall we just get rid of that? Anything to do with Q there? There you go. So Q's gonna drone, like I said, and the rest is shift. And goodness knows what. So that won't matter. What was that second button? I think it was W, wasn't it? I'm just gonna search by input. W, I'm just going to do the same thing again. Move forward, don't want that. So what I'm doing, I'm just clicking that cog in the corner there. And just going to delete. You can use your unbind button, of course. Move forward, delete. There we go. So W, we've only got drone, elevator, pitch down. Yep, better get rid of that. So when I press that button, I don't want other things to happen in the aircraft. It's just got drone now, that's fine. And the last one was E, wasn't it? Was indeed. Rudder, yep, let's just get rid of that. Etc, etc. Listen, I'll get rid of these and fast forward the video for you. So there we go, I've gone ahead and I've just deleted anything to do with E by itself that's going to affect if I press it. Drone won't take effect if I'm in the cockpit, so I'm not worried about that. Same for the others, as you saw, W and Q. So no other conflictions there. So what we can do now... Well, I'll tell you what, for that first button, I want it to affect my nav lights. So exterior lights, in lights, scroll down, you should see toggle nav lights. Let me just get my camera again ready. So press record there. What I'm going to do, I'm going to click in this box here. And this should be Q, shouldn't it? Q, there you go. So that's now toggle nav lights. Toggle taxi lights. Let's do, oops, camera's going out of focus. There we go. And um, we'll just come out of that. And I'll try and multitask here. Go back, autopilot. Hopefully I've still got you on the screen there. I do. Just bear with me. It would have been easier for me to set up my tripod here, but never mind. Autopilot. General. There we go. And autopilot master. So I want that third button as that. Just to show you. E. Now, let me just stop recording there for the moment. Sorry, that camera I'm using doesn't have a stabilizer. Like I said, that would have been better on a tripod, but hopefully you can see. Oh, there's an aircraft right in front of me there. That's okay, a bit of atmosphere, wouldn't, isn't it? Now we're in the cockpit. Keep an eye on where's our nav lights, nav lights and taxi lights. I'll do them first and then autopilot. So here we go with my brilliant camera work again. Nav lights, look. It's working fine. Taxi lights. It's working fine. And autopilot. Yeah, autopilot's turned on. Autopilot's turned off. There you can see. So, essentially, you can go wild and set up any controls for these buttons. Now, if you look at this... It's not very intuitive, is it? It's got all kinds of numbers. Let me show you now how you can configure this to your own bespoke settings. As I showed you at the start of the video. Yep, let's go and do that now. Now let me show you how you can set this up, the panel, panel up, so you can have your own bespoke buttons on there. What you want to do in the Microsoft Store, in apps, just search for Velocity 1. I've actually got it pre-ready there but just type in velocity one and you should get the velocity one flight hanger you can see that's the velocity one flight deck with the pictures you want to install that so i've got mine installed i've got it opened there we go and you know hopefully a lot of you will have this already installed make sure your firmware's up to date mine is firmware up to date and goodness knows what once you're in here Go to your Velocity 1 configurations. Throttle. This is the touch screen we want to affect. What I would do, I've got a new profile set up, but I'll create a new one with you. And we can call this Deck Test. Why not? 
deck test. And you know, you can change your image, browse your computer, or let's have an aircraft, there we go. Absolutely fine. Then we can go to panel editor. When you set up a new profile, you won't have any buttons set up. So you're gonna have to set up these for yourself. What you can do, you know, you can change it between space, commercial or combat. We'll keep it on combat green. Drag these boxes with your left mouse into the panels. I'm going to drag a good few of them just for this demonstration. And say we wanted to set up an autopilot panel here. We want the touch deck purely for autopilot panels. And you can give it a name, autopilot. There we go. What you can do, you click in these boxes here. You see where my icon there, my mouse icon has changed to a text. Well, like a line, that means it's a text icon now, so you can affect the text. Just left click into that text text. And I'll call this first one, AP Mast. You can only have four letters, by the way, so AP Mast. I'll call this second one. I'll just use delete to get rid of these. Uh, head. Uh, head mode. I'll call the third one. Nav. Mode. Etc. Etc. Rename the rest of them. So there we go. So that's. So I've got that set up. So if I go into the sim now. Well, you've got to actuate this. I'll show you that in a moment. So I've got these set up. You can uh, affect the rest of the text. Set these up as well. I won't do that. Let's just make this a little bit. Uh, quicker for you. Now, by default, those top three buttons, so one, two, three, are Q, W, and E, like I showed you before. You can actually change this around. Say, like the numpad, so just scroll down here on the keyboard inputs. The numpad, for example, I'm not using that in Flight Sim 2024, so I can have num1, num2, num3 on my numpad. So when I press those buttons, that's what I'm setting up on my touch screen. Hope you're following along there. So you see this Q here. I'm going to change that to num1. I'm going to drag that num1 to Q. Now it's give us num1 plus Q. I don't want that. I just want num1. So you can click on the little X there to get rid of the Q. So that, as you can see there, keypad 1. So when I press keypad 1 on my touch screen, it will come up as num1. W. Let's do the same. Let's change that to num2. Get rid of the W. There you go. E. Let's do the same. Get rid of the E. So that's num1, numpad1, numpad2, numpad3. Corresponding with those first three uh, touchscreen buttons. So that's num1, num2, num3. So keep a note of that. So I've got that set up and you can do the rest there. You know, num4. Oops. No. Going to have to select it first, and then num4. Select it first. Instead of T, we'll have num5, etc, etc. You can go through the rest yourself. Num1, num2, num3, num4. I've only got three buttons set up. Well, that's now num3, num4, uh, num5, num isn't it? Num4, num5, etc, etc. And you can set up the rest of them yourself. Important thing to do here, to actuate this. And actually, oh, to make this active, let me, sorry, my, I'm actually using my telephone to record. It's just gone into sleep mode, so I'm just going to wake it up into sleep, out of sleep mode. Just need to enter the correct password into my phone, which I have done now. Thankfully, what you do, you go back, and that's the one we've just set up. Let me just press record on my camera. So there you go. You can see it's in the default profile. What I'm going to do, I'm going to click, left click on this deck test. You can see that's gone into configuration mode. Look what's happened. Those buttons I set up, AP mast, head mode, nav mode. I didn't set the rest up, but you can do that yourself. They've now come on my screen. Important thing here, 
is that I only have one panel set up. So if I go next or previous, it will just go to the menu buttons. If you set up a few panels, you can have them set up for any control within Flight Sim 2024. Isn't that amazing? So there we go, people. That's how you do it. So set it up, create a new profile. Once you've set up, if you want to edit that, by the way, just go into the edit button here. And then I can go to the panel editor and continue, double click there, to set these up. Whatever I want to call that, etc, etc, set the rest of the buttons up. Go to number panel 2, you can have a second panel, etc. And then just remember to left click to make it active on your flight deck. What I want you to do now is go to my conclusion, give you my thoughts on, on me using my flight deck. It's been a year plus now at least, hasn't it? My thoughts on it, how it's been, and yeah, just my general recommendations. Okay, so let me give you my thoughts of using this flight deck for the past year now. It's actually uh, February last year that I received mine. Now, one thing I must say, it's not my daily flight sim setup. That's my daily flight sim setup. Honeycomb XPC yoke with the Logitech panels. Yeah, it's just generally what I use day in, day out. But I do get my flight sticks out quite often, including this one. Just absolutely sunny. It's always a joy to use. Now with that touch screen, it's got even better. I've had no hardware issues with mine. I know there's mixed reviews out there. I've not had any issues with the buttons. The buttons have been solid. It's quite a solid build. Now if you compare it with something like the Verpal set, that's a high-end system. The throttle itself on the Verpal costs as much as this altogether. So you've got to keep that in mind. Otherwise, I've had no problems with this. Pretty solid unit. Just had no problems with the buttons and dials and goodness knows what personally the only issue i've had the usb both the throttle and stick connects to your pc independently so there's a usb cord for each uh, so you can use each by itself in fact plugging them into a usb hub doesn't seem to work for me i have to plug them directly into my pc Lots of USB slots on my PC. It's not a problem. It's probably not going to be a problem for the majority of you. Other than that, no hardware issues. You know, Velocity One marketed this as the most advanced Holtas system out there. I've reviewed many different Holtas systems over the years. Just go and look at my videos from cheaper Holtas systems and flight sticks to the more high-end ones. This is absolutely the most advanced Holtas system I've come across. That throttle, if this was sold independently, separately, this would be a huge seller. It's one of the best feeling incredible resolution on that throttle as well best feeling definitely the most advanced throttle system i've come across out there plenty of buttons and dials and even so many buttons on the back of the system as you would expect and goodness knows what even after a year it's the most advanced Holtas system out there. If you're in the market, you're on PC, you're in the market for a Holtas system that's around that £300 mark. And remember the high ends, you're only going to get a throttle or stick for that. For that price, you'll get this whole system. In my opinion, you can't go far wrong with this. Now with the discovery, with my discovery at least, I'm sure many other people have discovered this as well, that you can set up any command on that touch screen. Makes it an absolute no-brainer. Still a huge recommendation from me. I'll put my Amazon links down below for the US and UK for this. You can get it from there. You can get it from the Velocity One Flight Store. If you go through Amazon, I've got to say this, I do get a bit of commission from that. You pay the same price. I just get a little bit of a kickback from Amazon. But buy this either way. Well recommended. Do let me know your thoughts. Give the video a like. If you've enjoyed it, subscribe for more. 
and I'll see you soon.